Okay, and just with the feet separated about hip distance, um, sitting up nice and tall, the knees are toward the sky. And I just like you to put your hands onto your knees and get a little gentle rock side to side, simply locating the butt bones, okay? And now as you keep the spine nice and tall, you can have the hands on the knees. We'll just lengthen until the arms either don't bend anymore or have a little bit of a soft bend. So the spine is tall. Now notice what happens here. Often we get a little rounding here or we try to arch a little bit. I'd like you to work toward a back that is your flat. And then sit up nice and tall. And then we'll do that again. We'll release it back and the arms may have a little bend in them, but I just like you to find your flat and don't worry about finding it right away. Maybe it's reaching the collarbones more open. Maybe it's getting round, rounding out of the back that way. Or maybe if you're sinking the chest a little bit, you need to lift that up and release that. So you're feeling this in the hip flexors too. We'll do that again. We're reaching it back now. Now we're intentionally rounding. I'd like you to round the spine so the sacrum is going toward or maybe on the ground, depending on the length of your arms. We're gonna keep that and bring the hands away from the knees. Have the palms facing toward each other. And we're gonna round on up. I'd like you to round on up until you feel those butt bones and then sit up tall. We'll do that twice more. We'll roll it down and we feel a nice rounding of the spine and Pilates, we call it the C curve. And then we'll round on up, there's the butt bones and we sit up nice and tall. Let's get the breath involved, inhale, round it down. Maybe looking down until you feel that circum, go as low as you can. And then exhale, lift it up, sit up tall and feel the butt bones. Now we'll inhale all the way down. So you're gonna get that sense of the sacrum. There it is. There's the low back now, aha, middle back, shoulder tips, upper back. We'll reach those arms forward. Don't worry where your legs are. I'd like you to drag the heels out until the toes are pointing forward. The fingers are pointing upward. I'd like you to stretch the whole body your hips and shoulders are on the ground. It's a slightest little back bend. Take another inhale, pull the low stomach in. And then as you exhale, reach the arms up, lift your head, neck and shoulders and we're rounding up. We try to round up, we're getting the position, but now those legs are long. We round out up until we no longer round and we sit up nice and tall, there's the butt bones. We exhale, we keep those legs heavy and long and slowly roll it down. Maybe you're looking down, you're rounding down, press the heels down to prevent, prevent the legs from dragging. We roll it all the way down. We reach the arms up and then they go overhead. That's the release. Take your inhale here, pull all the torso together. Exhale, lift everything up, those fingers reach forward. It's slow. We're using the stomach, we're trying not to use the limbs. You feel those butt bones and then you sit up tall. We're doing it once more. First round, keep rounding. Press the heels, press the shins, squeeze the legs, squeeze the buttocks. Ever so slowly, you're still feeling sacrum. Low back, middle back, shoulder tips. Reach those arms up. This time we're going up. I'd like you to round on up again, nice and slow. Now, once you round up, you feel the butt bones, drag the heels in, place those feet back on the ground. And now I'd like you to reach the torso over to the right, go as far away as you can. Bring the right hand outside the right leg, reach that left arm back. Good, we'll unite the palms, reach those hands up forward and we'll go to the other side. Reach it out, let's reach the arms over, good. And now reach it forward and reach it up, sit up tall. 
Now we're rounding down a little bit. We're finding that rounding. I want you to pretend you're in a boat. The floor onto your right side is the water. I'd like you to reach those arms out. Send the right arm back. Try to keep the feet on the floor and lower the right hand down. Reach it back up. Reunite the hands forward of you. Do it to the other side. We'll reach both palms out to the left. We'll let that left arm go back behind. We might lower those fingertips down with the control of the torso. Lift it back up and reach it forward. Let's add on. Reach the arms out to the right. Let's reach that right arm back. I'd like you to look over the side of your boat. What's there? And then exhale, lower it back into the boat. Reach those hands forward and reach it over to the left. Separate the arms, keep that left arm up, and then lean over your boat with your sideways. Exhale, come back into your boat and reach the hands back forward. Let's release by sitting up tall. We're going to unite all of those in the next exercise, and we're only doing four to each side. I'd like you to round it down. Good. Reach that right arm out. We're going to lower those right fingertips down, reach them back up. Rotate the torso, look over the edge of your boat, the whole sideways. Exhale, send it back. Reach the right arm forward. We go to the other side. Left arm goes out. We lower the fingertips down, it's really slight. Torso twist, we look over the edge of the boat. Exhale, reach it back. Hands go forward right away to the other side. Right arm reaches out and away. Right fingertips lower down. Torso twist and looks over the boat and exhale, bring it back. Right arm forward, last one. Left arm reaches out. We get a little tap behind us. We reach it up. We stretch over just to see the fishies. And we squeeze it all back in. We reach that arm forward. Good. We sit up nice and tall. Lengthen those legs up long. And try to sit with your spine tall. Maybe the hands come onto the thighs. We got into the hip flexors a lot there. Very nice. Now I'd like you to press the hands back behind you. Rotate the palms out to the side a little bit, but the elbows are behind your side ribs. Drag those feet back in. We're finding a reverse tabletop. I'd like you to look forward, gently squeeze the elbows together just until your collarbones enact, and then send the hips up. We're lean line from our knees to our shoulders. Press the hands down, especially the heels of the hands. Press the feet down, especially the heels of the feet. Take a full inhale here and a full exhale. Bend the elbows and lower the hips down. Let's send those hands back onto the thighs. We round now. Now it's becoming more familiar. And we slowly, once again, lower the upper body down. Those feet are trying to stay grounded. That's the hard part. I'd like you to bring the hands either back behind your head, neck, and shoulders. The fingers are in a soft interlace. We're not grasping or squeezing because the elbows want to stay out wide. I'd like you to with that, lift the head, neck, and shoulders. If this is too engaging, as we continue, I'd like to lower head, neck, and shoulders. But for now, lift it up. Bring the feet closer to each other until the knees squeeze, and bring both legs to tabletop. Knees are touching. Very good. Now slowly lift up as high as you can with head, neck, and shoulders, and exhale, lower it down. Inhale, lift a little more. Exhale, lower it down. We're doing eight more. If it's nicer for you to lower the feet down as we continue, please do. Inhale, up for four. Exhale, hover the head above the crown. Inhale, press the whole back down. Fingers are soft as we exhale. You're halfway there. Inhale, press it up. Try to keep the whole back on the mat. And if it's not, please lower the feet down. Inhale, lift head, neck, and shoulders up. 
Lower the head and hover, just three more. Inhale, exhale, soften. Inhale, fingertips are soft. Exhale, lower it down. Inhale, elbows are wide. Exhale, this time, please lower the head. Squeeze those knees in towards your chest. Wrap your arms around the shins. It might be nice to roll the sacrum around on the ground or the middle back, pardon me, the middle and lower back on the ground, going one direction and then the other. Just release any tension that might have been created. Again, the same starting position, different exercise. Legs go to tabletop, the knees are touching and squeezing. If the blanket between or your soft object between your knees is good here, find that. You might have bony knees. We'll inhale, lift 10 neck and shoulders, fingers are soft, look straight up. And as we exhale, we're lowering the toes to the ground or let them hover and squeeze them up to tabletop. Inhale down, squeeze them up to tabletop. What we don't want is the back rounding. So do what you can to either lower the toes and squeeze up using your low tummy. We have seven more. Down and up. Nice. Really good, Susie. You're not bringing the legs any further than tabletop. Good. Lower the toes down and bring it straight up. Try to come just to tabletop, not so high with the legs. So you're balancing a tray on your shins when you reach up just a little bit too high, Megan. Yeah, lower it down, tap, lift up, pause right there. Yeah, four more, you guys. Lower it down and lift, fantastic. Lower down, tap and up, wonderful. Another. Good, if you got another in you, please do it. Fantastic adjustment, Megan. Good, please lower those feet back down. I'd like you to press your palms. This is a release, just gently lift your hips high. The arms are alongside you, just lift the hips high and maybe a gentle wag of those hips side to side. Super soft, make it easy. This is not an exercise, it's a stretch. Come to center, please lower the butt, squeeze the knees in, wrap your arms around, maybe roll the sacrum around. Lovely. Now I'd like you to cross at your shins or your ankles, and we're going to roll the spine to its length. You can bring your hands behind the legs, and we'll roll up to length. Good. And now we're going to cross and we're going to roll over onto the legs so the heels come out we press it back and we find ourselves on our all fours position you may well need to back it up a little bit i'd like you to find cat and cow so the knees are under the hips and as you let the belly drop and the heart gently drags through the arms please rotate the biceps forward and exhale, maybe gently rotate the biceps back as you find cat. Inhale, it's subtle, but the biceps roll gently forward. The shoulders are active. Exhale, round the spine up into cat and hang the head. Do one more. Use the breath. And then exhale, send the hips high, round the back. Now we come to the neutral spine. I'd like you to lower down onto the forearms. The palms and forearms can be pressing or interlace the fingers. Now we're slipping that right leg back behind you. The left leg is angled on the ground. It's easy to send the leg kind of high. Use the discipline. So press the forearms down. Try to broaden the back a little bit so you can have that leg nice and even and your back is flat. Now let's reach that leg up as high as you can without using your low back. I'd like you to use the buttock and the glute and tap the toenail down and lift it back up. Do that again, lower the toenail down, send that long straight leg up. Soften your head and neck so you're not torquing the neck, but rather it's nice and soft as the toenail touches and lifts straight back up. When, when you lower the toenail, get a sense like the leg is very heavy and it's hard to lift it high. 
Lower it down with the same weight. Tap and lift it back up. High, high, high. Squeeze. Make that leg heavy and lower it down and tap and lift it back up. Keep going. That leg is heavier, twice as heavy than it really is. Very nice. Up, lower, heavy, heavy, slow, and up. Don't use the low back at all. Amazing. Lower it down. We have one more. Very good. The next time that toenail is lowered, I'd like you to bring that knee over toward your right shoulder. Get as high as you can. The hip is going to open out naturally. That's fine. Now lower the right inner knee toward the left inner knee and do that again. Squeeze it out like you're a puppy at a hydrant. Lower it down and squeeze it up again. Lower down the inner knees, kiss and kiss it up, separate. Let the knees kiss, separate. Lift the knee as high as you can. Lower it down. We're trying to keep the knee parallel. Remember when we were in tabletop? It's kind of like half tabletop. What you'll notice here is that, boy, that outside of the left leg is supporting a whole lot as we slowly lift that twice as heavy leg up. Do two more. We try to even everything out and try not to let your right side shift out. Kiss the knees and then send that leg up. Try to touch your head with your right toes. Good. From there, I'd like you to yearn that thigh towards your heart, round into a bit of a cat spine, or I mean a cow spine, and send the leg up and try to touch your toes with your head. Do it again. Squeeze the thigh toward the tummy. And then send it up. Try to touch your head with your toes. Again, squeeze and curl. Exhale, release, reverse. Squeeze, curl. What I'd like you to focus on is pressing those forearms down a lot. Try not to sink the heart and the chest between the arms. Yes, really good adjustment. So we've got broadness in the upper back. Amazing, yes, and squeeze it up. So the heart and the chest are really open. The back is doing its thing to keep strong. And we do one last one. Very good. Now I'd like you to send the hips back into child's pose. The knees will be narrow. Lower the forehead down. You might want to shift that right hip past the right heel. Maybe rest the whole thigh down. You might want to reach that right arm forward a little bit so you get a stretch in the right side of the body. Take a full inhale and a full exhale. Do it again. Just to release that side of the body before we move to the other side. And as you're ready, we'll shift the torso back to the center and we'll rise back up onto the all fours position. Pause here. Our goal is to work from a flat back at first. So press that leg straight back. I just want you to feel the back flat. It's hard because the low back wants to participate. Imagine the low back pressing up. And that left side of the chest is going to get really nice and strong. We're going to first lift that leg as high as you can. It's a different sensation. The buttock and the hip are lifting slowly. And lower the toenail down. Just tap it and lift it high. Imagine that your back is even on both sides. That may mean putting a little more attention into pressing your right hand down getting support of the right side of the body. The motions are subtle. The strength is intense. We focus on the side of the body. Your main job is to stay out of your low back, is to use the bigger, stronger muscles which are in the buttock, the thigh. The femur is weighted in your imagination like it's a heavy, redwood log. 
Lower the toenail down, tap and lift it up. We don't rest, it's just like, yep, like a seesaw and up it goes back again. We lower it down, itty tap and we lift up. We're just doing one more. We lower down and tap and we lift it back up. We send the legs straight back. The knee comes toward the shoulder. We try to lift with that same outer buttock and hip muscle. Really good. And then lower, let the knees kiss and reach it back up. Yeah, so we imagine a young little puppy lifting the leg. Weight the right hand a little more if you can. Press the right heel of the hand down until you feel an evenness in the chest as that hip hinge does what it's doing. Nice, I'd like you to do one more. Good, now lift the knee up and lengthen the leg out and squeeze it back in. Lower it down with the knees kiss. Lift the leg up, lengthen the leg out and squeeze it back in. And do a little tap, one more. Up and away and reach it out and squeeze it back in. Lower the knee up, the knees kiss. We're bringing that toe up in an arc. It's like you could touch the head, the head doesn't move. But now the head does move because you hinge and bring that thigh toward the tummy. Maybe you look up between your thumbs. Squeeze it up, use the femur, use the hip, use the buttock, and then round it down and squeeze. Go very slow. The leg weighs about 150 pounds. Squeeze it up. Carefully lower it down because if you don't, you might drop it. Lift it up and squeeze. Imagine it's so heavy and round it in. Maybe press with the heels of the hands as the thigh comes towards you. Two more. Really good control, everybody. This is the last one. Fantastic leg motion, Megan. Yeah. Good, now please lower back into a narrow child's pose. The hips go back toward the heels. It's not for everybody, but sometimes you get a bigger stretch if you send that left hip a little outside the heel. And it's just a little more profound stretch Let the left shift over to the left. Yeah, get that nice support of the right, aw. I see a little assistance, that's so lovely. <laughs> Good, take one more breath here. Yeah, and then exhale, we rise back up. We're still on the forearms for the very moment. I'd like you to press though, the palms up until you're in a tabletop position. We're on the wrist now, or pardon me, we're using the wrist now. And what I'd like you to do is once again, Reach the right leg back. Find that discipline, press into the heel of the right hand and lighten the left fingertips up and squeeze that arm forward. Nice. And now round the spine, bring the elbow to the knee, lengthen it out and do that twice more. We round, now we've got balance to deal with as we reach that right arm out slowly. Pardon me, left arm out and right leg. Do it again, squeeze it in and reach it straight back out. Here we hold, press that lower back up, widen the collarbones and lift the arm and the leg one inch 10 times. Just press up and up. As you press up, can you also reach? As you reach, can you widen the collarbones and protect your low back? Balance, so you press the left shin down a lot. You press the right heel of the hand down a lot and you do three more. Press up, look straight down right beneath your face and do one more. Good, last time squeeze and curl in. Lower the shin and the palm at the same time. Use all that control even in transition. And we go to the other side. Really nice and slowly, it's the left leg that goes back. Keep the right hand on the ground for a moment and really press both hands down. Get that nice, uh, not a hollowness, but an opening of the chest and a widening of the broad back. 
Now the right arm fingertips just lift up its light as a feather because you're really using the back. Good. Three times we're going to find the balance and squeeze elbow toward knee. Round it out. You have to press the right shin down a lot. Squeeze it in. Curl for your inhale. Exhale, even it out. Super slow. Last time, squeeze, curl, and press it out until both limbs are super long. Re-engage, get out of the low back. 10 times, one inch arm and leg lifts. Not only do they lift, but they lengthen long. Reach away with the toes, reach away with the arm. Mm -hmm. Good, good. And Susie, we're not squeezing in, we're just pulsing. Just pulse leg and arm up and up. Mm -hmm. You got it, up and up. We're doing six more, up, tiny, tiny. Up, good, smaller. Smaller for the last one, yes, that's it. Lower the palm and the shin at the same time. The balance is difficult. Right away, we're going to release that by rising up onto the shins. Good. And just situate the shins. It's depending on body. Either the knees are a little wide. And just rock side to side for a moment. It might even be nice to put the hands on the waist and kind of roll those hips out a little bit. Might send the butt back a little bit. Yeah, just let that upper body release. Very good. Now we're going to get a little more discipline. We're going to do some side work. Find the knees a little bit close together, but not touching. We really need the shins, so press them down. Let's reach the fingertips up. The fingernails are on the forehead. And we find now that same discipline. So we really broaden the collarbones and here the shoulder blades gently squeeze together as we gaze forward. It's like we're shielding the sun from our eyes, but fingernails are toward the head. Try to squeeze the buttocks gently together, just gently, and then send your right leg out and point your right toes toward me. Good. Now maybe look down and try to make sure the heel and the hip are aligned. Yeah, nice. One isn't facing form, one isn't reaching back. We inhale and lengthen away from that long right leg and then press it up, but don't go past center. Inhale, down, go as low as you can. Keep the right foot on the floor and rise. Don't go past center. This is your break. Inhale, accelerate slowly. Exhale, we find the break when we rise. We're adding on. We inhale, reach it down. Nice, allow that left hand to reach, maybe a little tap and reach it back up. So hard. Inhale, reach up. I know, it looks easy, not. Mm, inhale, down. Mm, guess what? Left side waist is like, what? and reach it back up. Inhale down. If it's too much to let those fingertips go, keep them there holding is hard enough. And we reach it back up just two more. Inhale. Fingertips softly leave as the left waist deals and we reach it back up. One more. Nice, let the fingers go. We reach it back up and we press up. Good, let's lower the hands down. I'd like you now to lower that left hand down, reach the right arm up so that the palm is facing down. Yeah, and then press the side waist and the hip up. Then maybe rotate that hand down and do a little pendulum swing. Release the shoulder, release the sideways. The further you reach toward that corner of your mat, the bigger stretch you're gonna get. It's dynamic and it should feel fantastic. Do one more. Good, and then we press it up and away. We unite the knees with control, gentle squeeze the buttocks just until the knees can unite. 
and the opposite leg can point forward. So when the left leg lands, it may not have landed nicely. So the left hip and the left heel are united. The left toes are pointing toward the screen. The elbows bend, and we're trying also to have the elbows separate just above the legs. So we're not leaning forward, and we're certainly not leaning back. Press that right shin down. Inhale away as far as you can. Exhale, release. Two more. It's so easy to go past center. And so what this looks like, don't do it, is ah, that's not what we want. We want to use this side waist too. So we lengthen. We put on the brakes right at the top. You're welcome to make this a little harder by Inhaling out, lowering right fingertips gently down, releasing them back up, and up we go. Good. Inhale it down, soften or not. Re-engage, up we go. So hard. Inhale, smile. Yeah, squinched face doesn't help us ever. And release it back up. We do it again. This is so challenging and you guys are doing really beautifully. We're just doing one more. Inhale, release it down, bring it back up and let's release it back up. Very good. Now we lower the arm down. We press the hand. Let's reach that arm up and really try to press your ribs to the sky. Yeah, it should feel amazing. Good, and now let's pendulum swing the arm down. When you reach that arm up, reach it away. Get the ribs super wide. Like you want them to take as much oxygen in as possible. Reach, reach, reach. Lower it down, we do two more. Reach it up and away. The shoulder's getting a nice little release. And press it up and away and lower it down and we rise back up onto the shins. For our transition, we sit the knees together. Very good. Now we're gonna release by crossing the shins back behind us and we're gonna roll over the opposite way. So bring your hands to prayer position. Use your hands if you need to and send the body back. We're landing in tabletop position. Good, you feel the butt bones. Very nice. And then just lengthen the legs out long. Good. Place that on the ground and rotate side to side until you feel the butt. Now we're going to get into the hips. If you have a roller handy, you're welcome to use that. The variations are we're either going to be in the way that we started class with the knees to the sky, the upper body down. If you're using the roller, the feet are going to go onto the roller. It's really the arch of the foot that reflects the rounding of the roller, and that's what we're finding. The roller's going to be close to the buttocks if you use it. I'm going to show you on the roller. If you're not using the roller, the feet are just in and they're close to the hips. There's space between the knees, depending on the width of your hips, not a lot. Take an inhale, and as you exhale, I'd like you to lift the hips high just to what that means to you. Now situate the shoulders underneath you so you have more of a support system. That usually means bringing the tricep flesh underneath you and the shoulder blades in a little bit closer. And now we think of the channel of the spine. So we're trying to get that long and spacious. You might bring the knees a little bit closer to each other until you feel the inner thighs lower a little bit. Very good. Now I'd simply like you to bring your right leg in towards you and then shine it straight up. Squeeze and engage your left buttock. You might put your hand there and give it a little lift and squeeze. Keep that hand there, lower it down. Lengthen the right inner knee, let it gently come toward the left inner knee. Flex the foot and lift it up. Point the right toe down till it comes to the inner knee height and lift it back up. Continue engaging. Lower down, flex it up. Inhale down, 
Flex, exhale, reach it up. Inhale down, exhale, reach up. There's five more. Inhale down, exhale up. So you see how that support of the upper body is important. It's important to protect the back, but it's also just important because really, aside from that, your left foot and your arms, that's it for support. Do one more. Now flex it down, bend that in towards you, put it on the ground or the roller and lower the hips on down safely and with control. I'd like you to shine the legs straight up to the sky. That gets the sacrum on the ground. You can roll the ankles around a little bit. We're still active, but it's a really nice release on the hips and all back. Very good, rebend. If you're using the roller, take a moment to soften the tops of the feet. Good, an opposite leg. We reach that leg up and away, grounded. Mm -hmm. Hips lift. Very good. Nice. And now point softly until the inner knees kiss. Flex the foot up. Mm -hmm. The leg's still really heavy. Lengthen, it's a long leg, a little bit. Don't go so low for me, Christina, just till the knees kiss. Yeah, good, flex it up. The hips are both lifted off the ground. Yeah, there you go. Right hip, try to lift it up every time, every time. Lift it up, nice, 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 Susie. Good, we have three more. Go slow, pretend that leg weighs a ton. Yep, so good. Do your last one. Nice, and lower it down slowly, lower the back down. Very good, it's probably gonna feel to hug the knees into the chest a little bit. Give them a good squeeze. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, you're welcome to keep that roller there for a moment for this last use with the roller, and then we're going to get the heels together for a moment. It's a simple lift and lower, but it's not so simple because we're going slow and with the count. So first, feet are on the roller or the ground, lift the hips up. Re-engage your shoulders so you've got a good structural support system. If you want, send the hands to the butt lifted higher, and then yeah, good. And we try to keep that high. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. So we'll tap the butt down and lift it straight up. Maybe press the hands up and get that squeeze. Lower it down, give a little tap, lift it up, squeeze. So the inner thighs are actually rotating to the sky. Lift it up and squeeze. Try not to use your hands. Lower it down and lift it up and give it a good old squeeze. Good, we have six more, lower down, lift. Squeeze it up more, you can get like four more inches. Lower it down and lift it up and squeeze. Yeah, really send it up there. Lower it down, lift it up, give it a good old squeeze. Two more, lower down, lift. Lift higher, higher, higher. Yeah, shoulder structure is important. Do it again. Give it a good squeeze. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Great support of the hands. It's a nice reminder. Now, if you have your roller, please roll it away. This is the last butt motion we're doing in this variation. I'd like you to bring your heels together. Your upper body's in the same position, but your heels come toward each other. The toes point out to the side, okay? We're doing the same lift and squeeze but I'd like you to listen carefully. Press the palms down. As we lift it up, it's a very different kind of a squeeze. Press it up, I'd like you to get that shoulder structure and then pulse it up for eight, seven. So you're lifting higher. It's not as high as you were before because you're using the heels together, the toes apart. Three, two, one. Slowly lower it down, tap and lift it up again. Pulse for eight seven, 
six. This is a different part of the gluteus. Four, three, two, one. Tap it down and lift it up and do it again. Squeeze, pulse up, up. Up, really good. Keep going. Four, three, two, one. We have two more. Lower it down and lift it up and shh. Exhale. It's tiny little pulses up. Very good. Very good. Two more. And this is the last one. We lower it down and lift it up. Heels are together. Press them down as you squeeze. Seven. Good. Stay with your breath. Very nice. Please lower everything down right away. I'd like you to roll over onto your tummy. Get your knees nice and wide and please press the body back into child's pose. Now here, it can be nice to gently wag the torso and hips side to side. So the belly kind of rolls around in between the inner thighs. And then soften everything and get that low back really nice and released. Arms are wherever you like. I want you to feel that support. Very good. Take another full round of breath here. And when we're ready, we'll drag the hands back in and rise up. I'd like you to press your hands a little far forward away from your shoulders. Let's curl the toes under and we're using that flat back. We're lifting the knees up only like there's a sheaf of paper underneath your knees. It's a tiny little lift. If the low back at curvature, which is likely to do, I try to you to imagine a flat back. Nice. And now we slowly rise onto the balls of the feet, lift it high, and then we press into downward facing dog. It's good to come to the ball of one foot and press the heel of the other down. Hold that for three, two, one. Reverse that one heel goes down the opposite. We get that little pretty little toe. Yeah, very big arch, press the hamstring back. Do it again, rise and press it back and do the opposite one, rise and lower, opposite legs. Very good, now please lower back to downward facing dog, both heels are moving toward the ground. You're like a robot. I'd like you to rock the body forward into plank position. Yeah, almost robotic, it's really nice and strong. Separate your feet as if they're your hands. They're about the same distance as your hands. You're in a very strong plank position. I'd like you to bring the left hand about an inch or two closer to the right hand. So you press into the right hand, lift the left hand up and bring it in a little bit closer. Try to find your whole lower body still in the strongest plank. Take an inhale, reach your right tricep around your ear. Hold for three, two, one. Try not to shift the weight too much and lower the right hand under the shoulder. Bring the right hand in closer to the left. The legs are super stable. Find your true plank. Try to get your tops of the buttocks toward the heels. The low tummy is engaged. Lift the left arm up. The tricep is around the ear. Even out the hips below you for two and one. And lower that hand down. Keep the hands where they are and press it back into downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale. Please walk your wide legs up towards your hands. It's hard, but try to keep the torso even. Bend your knees a little bit and soften your shoulders. We're rolling up to standing very slowly. Press the heels. Press the balls of the feet and the toes down and slowly, slowly roll up. When you rise, I'd like you to point the fingertips down alongside the legs. If you have a Pilates ring here, that will be really handy. The arms are nice and long. And if you don't have a ring, a block would do too. We're gonna get into some tricep work and we're gonna be reaching back behind us. 
And we're gonna find the ring squeeze in the reverse. So if you have one, we're gonna gently press the elbows out. The hands are on the handles of the ring and we're just gonna be able to squeeze it. We can't squeeze much. If you don't have anything, don't worry. If you have a block, same thing. The hands are on the outside of the elongated part of the block. If you have a short roller, you can do the same thing. If you have nothing, quite hard because what we're doing is we're bringing the palms toward each other and reach them long. We keep the back at an angle and we reach those arms long. I'd like you to super engage the triceps, okay? So even reaching the back, you can feel it. If you have something and you're squeezing it, we're bending the knees. We're at about a 45 degree angle. The neck is in line with the shoulders. Press the ring gently. If you have your ring, your elbows are gonna to go to the sky. Press it. Not much is gonna happen. If you don't have a ring, you're bringing the palms to the sky and you're lifting up an inch. Not only lifting up an inch, you're lifting the fingers away. You're trying to reach far, far away. Yes. Far, far away, it's an inch. Tiny little inch lift. The arms are back behind you. Mm-hmm. Good. Now, would you like to come up onto your tiptoes? You could squeeze the knees together, rise on the tiptoes, sink the hips down. Wonderful. You guys, this is perfect. Very good. Send those arms back, tiny. Yes, either squeeze or press up. So small, do one more. Lower the heels down and stand straight up like mountain pose to dasana. Good, major, major tricep stuff, I know. One more, one more variation. If you had the ring, you were squeezing and pressing in. If you didn't, you were pressing up and away. Everybody's gonna press up and away and this time it's gonna be a biggie. So we find the same position we activate those arms really strong. Maybe you rise up onto the tippy toes already. You reach those arms back and then you crisscross those arms back behind you. Yeah, and try to get a big old wide scissors, but make it abrupt on the inner squeeze. Shoo, 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 shoo. But the fingers reach back as much as the arms reach up. Fingers reach back as much as they go up. Amazing, yes. Change mind, it's called in ballet. Shoop, shoop, abrupt, fist, quick. Hmm. Yep, yep, imagine the swan. Do, do, do. We go for four, three, two, one, nice. Lower the heel, stand straight up. Let's reach that right arm up to the sky, bring it a little bit back behind the head. Bend that hand back behind you for your stretch and press your head into that tricep forearm. Good, if you wanna bind, you're welcome to bring that arm back, clasp either reaching for clothing or fingertips. Use the weight of your head to press it back and stretch your tricep. Nice. Ah, but soften everything else, hardest part. Good. We'll unclasp, release it down. It's nice to help the arm up with the other arm. So you kind of bring it back behind the head first and then get that hand behind the heart, press the head and maybe the other arm reaches back and you clasp and then the head presses further into the arm. Yeah, really good release. But the rest of the body is super engaged still. Mm -hmm. Nothing sinking or caving in, ribs are in, back is tall. Good, let's release that down. If you have a ring, I'd like you to bring that into your hands again, this time forward. Yeah. Very good. Now we're separating the feet nice and wide. Good, the toes are generally pointing outward and you're gonna bring the ring above the head like you have a little halo. You just gave yourself a little halo. When we lower down into a gentle little squat, it's not a squat, it's a plie. We lower the torso straight down, 
the ring goes up, we meet the head with the ring. We give ourselves our halo back. So it's lowering squat, arms reach up, and then we keep those arms lifted and we lift up, squeeze the butt. Very good. Starting position. Lower down into the squat. The shoulders reach the arm up. You can press the heels of the hands into the handles if you like. Keep the arms straight and press straight up. Squeeze the buttocks. Gently bend the elbows until you have a closer halo. Good. Lower down. The knees go wide. The buttocks press. Reach the arms up. Use the shoulders. Keep those shoulders engaged and press the heels down. Squeeze the butt. Good. Bend the elbows slightly. Halos closer. Very good. Lower down. The pubic bone is pressing a little bit forward. Shoulders squeeze and lift the ring or arms up. Keep it. Squeeze the legs up together. Squeeze the butt. Gently soften. We have one more. Lower it down. Use the shoulders to press the arms straight. Keep it. Squeeze the butt and press the heels down. And finally, release the shoulders. Yeah, I know. Let it go. A lot of us are weak in the shoulders. It is an issue for women. It certainly is for me. Yeah, so that's small, but it's really quite intense. Okay, we're going to do one more shoulder thing. We've done this before. We're going to do shoulder push-ups. So I'd like you to find yourself gently toward the back of your mat. We're lowering down and we're walking the hands out, not to downward dog, but to pike position. The hands are very wide. You got a ton of real estate under the fingers and the palms and the knuckles. When you lower your head, you're looking towards your knees or your shins and align your body so that your ears are generally within the realm of the arms, okay? Now I think you, you, your feet are probably down, but basically the base of your foot or the ball of your foot where your heel was, so you're in a gentle tiptoe. Now we'll pull the stomach in so the hips can go higher, okay? Press the heels of the hands, so you're trying to get the hips as high as you can. Now look forward, generally just straight down. Bend the elbows only, that is all you're going to do. So bend the elbows, they come closer to the ground, press them straight up. Bend the elbows down toward the ground, it's almost like you're going to forearm plank and press it straight up. You're trying to do that, meanwhile the crown of your head is going toward the ground and press it straight up. If the crown of the head gets toward the ground on that angle, cool, it's not going to, don't try, but you know what I mean. Squeeze the elbows and press down the crown of the head, lowers for the ground on an angle. Press it straight up, we're doing four more. Keep the elbows in close. They don't splay out to the side, they simply bend back. They're bending back toward the knees as the crown of the head lowers. It's quite difficult. Press it up, we're doing one more. Inhale down and exhale, press it straight up, good. Now walk the feet up to meet the hands. It doesn't need to be disciplined. I'd like you to bend the knees so that the tummy and the legs connect. Reach those arms back and you find a clasp and then send the clasp up overhead and tuck your chin and hang your head. Release those shoulders that you work so hard. Yeah, let those shoulders rotate around. If you wanna bring that clasp a little far forward, like, yeah, more toward the front of the room. Yeah, yeah, really, really nice. That probably feels so much nicer, Megan. Good. And tuck the chin a little bit because the weight of the head lets the shoulders open up even more. Imagine I'm gently pulling your hands forward. Yeah, you got more space, Megan. You got even more. Yeah, let the shoulders free and open. We got more space here than we think we need. Susie, you be careful. Very good. 
Okay, and then slowly we're going to release that. We're going to bring that clasp back toward the hips. And here I'd like you to bend the knees, but bring those feet out a little bit wider. So it's almost like our plie position, but now we're going to lower the body in between the knees and the elbows go in between the knees. Let's give the wrists a break and maybe bring them uh, wrist, back of the wrist toward each other. And then maybe we slowly rock side to side. If your heels are not on the ground, don't worry about it. Maybe it's lifted. Yeah. If you need a blanket or your sweatshirt or a towel back there, maybe even a roller for your feet, that's nice too. Yeah, just release and press. Now we're releasing all that back work. Just place your hands on the ground. Maybe crawl those out so the shoulders are still between the knees. Now you might feel the knees kind of around the shoulders and hang your head. But maybe push the hands gently down so you can rock the hips back a little bit. Don't let the whole body sink forward. Keep the feet nice and grounded. Let the upper body round. Let the low back release. Now maybe gently walk the hands over to the right, really gently. Yeah, that left shoulder is inside the left leg, super soft. And then really slowly, maybe we gently walk the hands just a little bit the other direction. Take some nice breaths here. And then bring the hands back towards center and lift the head up slowly. Yeah, no dizziness. And then we're going to send the hips down. And we're just going to reach for the outside of the feet and bring the legs up. Yeah, that didn't happen. Just generally we're reaching the legs forward, just in a little bit of a, you know, crossy position. Don't worry about the back too much yet. Okay but try to open the heart forward, engage the shoulders in their sockets and lengthen the legs out long. And now try to lift from the low back up. The legs are generally in a splits position. Really good, keep the gaze forward. Try to find that nice little lift. The low body is really strong. With control, we're gonna try to unite those heels the way we did when they were on the ground. With control, with control, we're gonna to try to bring the uh, balls of the feet together and we slowly with control lower the feet down. Feel the butt bones again, wag them side to side. And one last thing, we're gonna squeeze the heels in, wrap the hands around the feet. And as you sit up a little taller, maybe press the elbows inside the legs and rock side to side. Yeah, just release not work, release. Very good. And then we're going to soften, bring your hands outside the legs so they gently close. Hands on the thighs, just let the upper eyelids meet the lower eyelids just for a moment and lean back a little bit. We'll feel that strong back, gently let the shoulder blades come toward each other in the back. Inhale here. And then exhale, gently open the eyes and nice soft gaze. You all did beautifully. That was a strong, very engaged class and I'm impressed with the strength that you found. Very nice work, everyone. So I